Hi everyone and welcome to Taipei, Taiwan. Today we are showing you around the Wenshan district and we are super excited for this one today. We're gonna go to the zoo and catch a gondola up into the mountains, try out some local tea, all sorts of fun stuff planned today. So, we're excited to show you around. Yeah, let's go. So, it's super easy to get here. There's a train line, the brown line that ends at the Taipei Zoo. You can get here in like, I don't know, 20 minutes from Taipei. We're about to go buy our tickets at the kiosk using our easy card. And so you know, you get a 20 NT discount on the Mao Kong gondolas if you use your easy card to pay for the zoo tickets the same day you ride your gondola. Super helpful because we're going to go ride them later. Yeah, the tickets are only 60 NT, which is about two US dollars. So that is a crazy good deal. I know, especially because they have pandas here. I know. San Diego Zoo also has pandas, and it is now $79 for tickets to go there. This is like a crazy steal. So this zoo has seven areas, including one for the pandas, and also another one for local Taiwanese animals, which I'm excited to see. We're gonna do our best to see them all. Let's go. and black bear. I think this is one of the only places you can see them in the world because they're endemic to Taiwan. And there's only 200 to 600 left in the entire country, mm -hmm. mostly in the mountains and stuff. And they're really big. Yeah, they're a lot bigger. I don't know why I was expecting a bear to be small, but... I know, that thing is definitely big enough to eat you. Yeah. Look at him. Oh, we're dead bears. I know, he, he can smell it. I definitely think he smells the coffee. Is it? Pangolin. Oh yeah, yeah, it's marked on the map. Yeah. I'm not very observant. I'm so excited to see that. That was super cool. I loved seeing the endemic species to Taiwan. Yes. And we got to see pangolins, which for me, that was the first time I ever got to see one mm -hmm. of those in person. So that was cool. Yeah, but it was now, cool. On to the insectarium. <laughs> The info guide person here just explained I stink. How do you say uh, water? Sweat. A sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and they that's like why it. they landed on you. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> How does it feel to be the person chosen by the butterflies? Like a Disney princess. You're not getting away. Loved the insectarium. That was really cool. The butterfly thing is awesome. This whole area is part of it. They have a dragonfly watching area, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and I think there's parts we missed too, even. Probably. Yeah. But we don't have the time, so we're gonna skip along to the next part. This zoo has really great plants. If you look around, it's just so lush. They've got things like orchids and ferns planted all over the trees. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Just everything's so green. And it's springtime, so there's a bunch of flowering plants around too. It's worth a visit just as a park without any animals even. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is really nice. I know. It's an elaborate panda pavilion. Wow. Oh, this is cool. And you, here you think for $2, you're not gonna see anything cool. This is fantastic. They even have an underwater tunnel over there. What? I wow. know. I'm excited to see that. There's some big fish in there. What do you think, Randy? I am surprised that the zoo is so amazing for $2. I thought it was going to be kind of like one of those small zoos, but it is like a full zoo in the US. You'd be probably paying at least 50 bucks for this, like anywhere. <laughs> 
I love it. And they integrate the nature so well with everything. And they have a huge variety of animals. The gondolas aren't running because it's raining. I know. I guess they turn them off during stormy weather. So we're going to have to come back another day. And we'll stick it on the end of this video anyways. Uh, more time at the zoo. Yeah, exactly. We decided we wanted to get a snack because all this walking is making us tired. And this place sells frog cakes and the buildings in the shape of a frog. I'm gonna get frog cakes. <laughs> yeah, frog cakes. <laughs> frog cakes. How much was it, Brandy? 100, so that is a little over $3. She even felt to make sure we got some warm, fresh one. She's feeling the bottom. Super cute. It said they were custard filled, so I'm imagining it's gonna be a bit. Wow, they come with a lot. Look how cute these are. And they have a nice, like, warm vanilla flavor. Mm. I always feel bad eating. I know. That's actually really good. Yeah, they are really good. Mm -hmm. A lot of time when you get these, they're really eggy. But this is like a really just sweet pancake batter, and the custard's nice too. Mm -hmm. Nice and sweet, thick without being overly eggy. Mm. And look, <laughs> we're sitting under a giant leaf. I, I like the theme right here. All right, want to keep checking out everything? We gotta go find some penguins. Yeah. Are you happy that you've now seen the penguins? Yeah, I am. Just finished up with the zoo and it is huge. We definitely did not get to see all of it. So plan to spend the whole day here because you're not gonna have enough time to see everything otherwise. Anyways, we were going to take the gondola, but unfortunately it was closed due to the weather. So we're gonna skip ahead and take it from another location. So it's about a week in the future. Finally got a break in the days where it's sunny enough and not raining and not windy enough that we can actually <laughs> ride the gondola up to the top. Right up here. Very short walk from the zoo. We are gonna miss out on that discount we mentioned, but there's some really cool stuff up on the hill that we really wanted to see regardless, so. So you can just tippy-tappy your easy card to get up there. Mm -hmm. No need for tickets. So you get the option to take the regular one or the Crystal Cabin one. The Crystal Cabin has a glass floor. Okay. Which one do you want to take? Uh, I don't know. There's less of a wait for the regular ones. Yeah, that wait is 30 minutes. It's kind of long. It's not that bad. It's a little bumpy. <laughs> it's really pretty up here though. Yeah, it is. It feels like I'm in Jurassic Park right now. Yeah, the jungle is crazy down here. Look at that. So the gondola lets off right by this Taoist temple, which is uh, what we read it was online. And here is a map of the area. It looks like there's some hiking trails, a scenic area. And then in that direction, there are the temples that we're trying to go see. Okay, let's go. So this is Zinan Temple, which was built in 1882. It's a Taoist temple, and in Taoism, they will have temples for specific deities. This one is for Lu Dongbin, which is one of the eight immortal uh, figures in Taoism. But anyways, the important thing is he was a ladies' man, and if you come here and you're unmarried as a couple, it's reputed you'll break up. <laughs> Good thing we're married, right? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Well, Good thing. Lingzhao Temple. Wait, so is this it or no? Uh,
and gets this whole complex. There was a Xenan temple. I don't know. It's not very clear. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> well, come to Lingxiao Temple. It's very pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. Who knows if what I said was correct, but... We're, we're doing our best here. Yeah. It's one of the top 100 religious sites of Taiwan. Perfect. There you go. Oh, that should be good enough. We're headed to the top of the mountain, which is a famous tea growing region. Ooh. I don't know. I think I see some like up there. Maybe. Maybe. Well, anyways, this area is famed for its oolong tea and tea houses where you can try it. So we're going to go try some tea. Up in the mountains, which yeah. is like the famous spot for it. Ooh, it should be good. I, I'm so excited. I feel like I could really use a tea right now. I know, and I've never had tea fresh, like from a farm grown by like a farmer. It's always been like Lipton or something. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to the tea plantation. Yeah, we did. I didn't realize there's a whole town up here. Yeah, I think it's called Musa or something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, they're we'll have to put it the economy is centered on tea and tourism. Sweet. I'm so excited to try this tea and get a snack. I'm starving. When you get off, there's a whole tourist map, because what we're going to show you today is just a sampling of everything that's up here. You'd easily spend like a day or two exploring this area. It's especially easy if you have a car. So there's lots of little tea houses and plantations and stuff kind of tucked away, yeah. And we're coming down to here, okay. and we're going to probably do the tea promotion center. There's a tea house around here I want to go to, and then the mini skywalk. All right, let's go. It's a tea plantation. Neat. <laughs> you smelling it? Tea. Tea. <laughs> I am loving this little town so far. It has amazing views. I love all these little tea shops. So many have like flowers filling over and lanterns and they all smell so good. You walk by the open door and you're like, wow, it's tea. Yeah, freshly steamed tea. Yeah, it's oh, amazing. I'm so excited to try the tea, but this is like my vibe. I love this. We just found the Tea Promotion Center where you can sample free teas. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm so excited to do this because I could use a little lift right now. It's like a whole museum about tea. I really wasn't expecting an entire museum about tea too. I thought it was a big old tea house situation. That's kind of cool. Not everything's in English, but most of it is. Enough to like read and hang out for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. There's some machines to show you how tea's made. <laughs> yeah, and some displays and stuff. Pretty neat. Okay, want to go under the tea? Yeah. There's also an outdoor area. Well, that was a tea house. I mean, I don't know if it's because of COVID or Maybe we just came too late or the time of day, I don't know. But they didn't have the tea available. I don't know. But if you want to see a little tea museum, it's cute here. little stock, yeah. I think to make up for it though, we're going to have to go check out this uh, award-winning tea you've been talking about all day. Real tea so house. We'll still get tea. <laughs> um, there's steamers. It kind of looks like a vacuum head to me. Vacuum flamingos. I don't know. <laughs> it's recycling. Yay. <laughs> One man's trash is another man's innovative art exhibit. Wow, this is really beautiful though. Look at all of those tea plantations down there. And by all of, I mean one. It's a little <laughs> dramatic. Look at that tea plantation down there. there this is go. beautiful. like 99% sure this is it. So let's go. 
I was so hungry. I was so excited for this tea. Hello, you can do it. You can do it. Order here. Order here. Okay, and then do you just want one tea and then food? Yeah, I think you get a um, pot of tea. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, how about that one? This one? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Alan did tons of research online to find this place, and I guess this guy has amazing Xiaolong Bao, which are dumplings I love, you'll see in a minute, and tea. But anyways, basically we just uh, took a right at this like intersection. And we found this place, he didn't speak any English, so it's probably gonna be amazing. <laughs> it's authentic. Oh, it's so pretty up here too. Shishi. Shishi. I have no idea how to do this. There's like a whole elaborate thing, cause like... I just thought we got hot tea. Yeah, part of the reason why the tea is so expensive is because you buy tea and then they send you home with tea. Ah. Like whatever you don't drink. Tea I've never heard of before. Grown here though. Yeah. By this guy and processed. Yeah. It's award winning tea. It's real tea. Oh. Uh. <laughs> no. Maybe you, no. no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The whole process was a bit of a like daunting thing. I have learned that I know nothing about tea. It's elaborate. Yeah, you want to explain it or do you want me to? No, I can do it. Okay. So you take a scoop of tea, put it in the pot, you do it with the little bamboo scooper thing they got here, and then you rinse the tea once with hot water and you use this thing that's like a strainer. You can see it's like a little oh. sieve in the bottom. Then you take the rinsed tea and you pour it over the, hot, the pot into this little basin, I guess to keep the teapot hot and not waste the heat. <laughs> and then you put hot water back in the teapot, let it rest for a minute, and then you pour it into the sieve here to strain it again, and you're left with a teapot full of tea that you can then use to fill the peas up. And what did he do at the end? He said something about the box? Oh, you can take what isn't used up with you. Okay, so you can take it home. That's yeah. what you were saying earlier. So it's like actually really affordable because when you go to the store and you buy tea, at least this quality of tea. It's very expensive. It's very expensive, even in Taiwan. So it's actually like a great way to get the tea cheap and kind of enjoy an afternoon. All right. Well, are you ready to try probably the best tea you're going to have in your life right yeah, now? <laughs> I, I sure hope so. Cheers. Do you cheers with tea? I do. I'll let you try it first. Wow. Oh. <laughs> it smells really good. Man, I've been drinking like the wrong tea my whole life. This is crazy. This <laughs> is so much more floral and flavorful than like any tea I've ever had. It's like drinking a pot of flowers, really. Hmm. Whoa. It's so... Mm. I like this a lot. It is like really floral and mellow. Not bitter at all Not either. Not bitter, no. Shishi. Oh yeah, this is some hot buns. Okay. I'm going to put that in the video. So, in Asian cultures, they love to use these bamboo steamers that have little grates in them. And they put it on a big old pot of steaming, well, water, I guess. And <laughs> they're all in stacks. So we actually have some other dumplings underneath these. But these ones on top are sweet cream dumplings. It's a, a nice custard inside, but I like it pairs well with the tea, it's not overpowering. I love this little stamp they used on it. But I love this thick, eggy custard. It's almost more like egg than custard. Okay, 
this is what I am so, so, so excited for. These are Zhao Long Bao. So basically it's a pork dumpling and it's cooked so that it gets soupy. So there's this liquid inside that you're supposed to suck up and they're supposed to have a nice thin casing. I'm really excited to give these ones a try. Soup dumpling. There's not a lot of soup in these. It's still really good. It's like nice and porky. The ingredients are fresh and just a great ginger flavor. Mm. It's like a pork and chive dumpling, they're but good. they're good. Yeah. You can tell they're handmade though. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get on with it. Yeah. Bye -bye, yeah. Is that made of foam? <laughs> it's just a giant block of styrofoam. I thought it for sure. It was a rock. <laughs> well, anyways, I think our audio cut out while we were leaving, but uh, we decided to leave. We wanted to see the sidewalk before it gets dark, and that's the sign at the fork of the road. Yeah, and look for the foam block with some stylized <laughs> Chinese letters. I definitely thought it was a rock. <laughs> yeah, there is another um, like arrow right here. Here's the other sign, which also looked like a good restaurant. I don't know, but if you want to go to the same one, that one. Yes, highly recommend it. Yeah, it was so good for the tea. Just amazing. Best Food was good too, but the tea was... Best I've ever had. Yeah, next level. 360 degree perspective in addition to providing a stunning view of the valley. That sounds like it. No. That's totally it. That's right there. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Lane 40, section three. This is it. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all right. All right, guys. Well. <laughs> Okay, we thought there was a greater skywalk, but it's actually this really cool platform we were at yeah. earlier with the weird, like... Flamingo um, vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, on the upside, there's a bus stop here, so you can easily reach it. Yep, and we're about to take that. We're actually going to take the gondolas back. Wait, what? Yeah, they're way faster than taking the bus. Oh, okay, well, I guess we're gonna go take the gondola back down then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just in time for sunset. Just in time for sunset. Oh, that'll be nice. There's no line on the way back, so we're waiting for one of the crystal cabins. I hope we get it all to ourselves. Cheers. <laughs> okay, at the crystal cabin might be worth the wait. <laughs> this is wild. It is nighttime in Taiwan, so you guys know what that means. Yep, we are at the Linjiang Night Market, which is about a 10 minute walk from the Brown Line. It's technically part of the An District, but we already did another food market in that video, and this is like on the way home from the Wenshan District, unless you're of course staying in the Wenshan District. So I read about it a little bit, Tonghua and Linjiang are the same street market. It just depends on which street you're on. It kind of sprawls over a couple of blocks, so. We're headed over to the Tonghua side now. If you don't know what a stir fry is, which I think would be hard, right? You basically take a superheated wok and they have like an extra powered burner here with like extra heat. Not like a kitchen stove in a Western house at all. It's more like a blowtorch or jet engine or something, right? It gets it really, really hot. You throw in a bunch of oil and it starts to smoke. And then you throw in your meat and vegetables and cook them really, really fast. It gives everything this really fantastic smoky flavor without overcooking it either. So, this one is just beef. Oh, thank you. That one was clams. It was really nice. So the one we got though is 
feet. And this green stuff in here is actually basil. This is one of the healthiest looking things we've ever gotten at the street market. There's like actual vegetables in it. It's really delicious. It's not too spicy either. Everything in it is like perfectly crunchy and soft and well done at the same time. And of course it has that smoky flavor I was describing. I like that a lot. Let's finish this up and try the next dish. So right next door is Yukon Wan Ice and Hot Tang Wan, which makes something similar to mochi. This is real Chinese dessert. It's called Tang Wan, which are these balls here made out of glutinous rice, similar to mochi. They basically take rice, pound it until it's like this sticky goo, and then they form it into balls and steam them so that they keep their shape. And then they add something called the osmanthus syrup. And I guess osmanthus is a flowering plant. And then you serve it on a bed of shave ice. You can also just have it hot. You can also have it hot in a bowl, yeah. But we got it cold style because it's hot in Taipei right now. Let's give it a try. <laughs> that was like a roller coaster of flavor and sensations. <laughs> It's really good though, I like it a lot. Terribly anymore. Okay. Mmm. I like that. That's really good. Mmm. I don't know what's inside of it. I thought it was black sesame, but that looks more like peanut. It tastes more like peanut. But there's sesame in it too. It's really good. It's like a roasted, chunky peanut butter almost. And it's chewy and cold. I like it. And just so, like a little warm and the, the ice makes the mochi more chewy too. Less soft. Mm. We really want to show it first about this one just because I feel like visually it kind of breaks the like steam of what like a, a dessert would look like, at least for Westerners. But this is one of my favorite things. If not my favorite thing I've eaten in Taiwan. I love this. Definitely gonna be eating this more often. But we have a lot more food to try. So next up, we got some pan-fried dumplings. I think they're for the pork and chive, like most of the dumplings here. And they smell kind of fermented. Honestly, it's really mellow. So I put chili sauce on it, make it a little spicier. But they smell like beer. I think they're cooking them in beer. Let's give it a try. It's pretty delicious, honestly. It is mild, but it kind of reminds me of a bratwurst cooked in beer. And then the flour kind of reminds me of a pretzel. I don't know. They're pretty good though, I like it a lot. Yeah. We got these delicious sweet potato wedges, and they're twice fried. We asked them to put salt and pepper on it, and it's Chinese five spice. <laughs> the batter is also sweet potato flour. So it's a potato dipped in potato fry. It's delicious though. So. It's really good. Nice and soft. Super crunchy on the outside. It's pretty good. Well, our battery is about to die. So thanks for watching. And if you liked what you saw, watch another video. It really helps us out. There's more food. <laughs>